Glad to have you join us. And uh, I want to share with you about something that the Apostle Paul warns the Philippian Christians about that they should watch out for. The Philippian Christians were good people. They had a great love for the gospel. They had great personal relationships with Paul. And uh, by far, they could be considered quite a good church. Yet for all in uh, Philippians chapter 2 and verse 2, the Apostle Paul says, Fulfill my joy by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit. So he's warning the Philippian Christians about selfish ambition. Now, ambition is a very good thing. The desire to achieve is a very wholesome phenomenon that can operate in a person's life. And as parents, we want uh, our children to have ambition so that they will progress, they will study, they will do the best they can in their lives. But selfish ambition is quite another thing. If in a workplace, a business or some other environment, a person is motivated by selfish ambition, uh, he would be a person or she would be a person who would try to achieve something even at the expense of other people's interests and even if it causes friction or factions in that organization. And that is what the Apostle Paul is focusing on. And so he gives a secret about how to deal with selfish ambition, how to neutralize it. And we will look at that. Uh, in the first chapter, Philippians 1, the Apostle Paul talked about preachers who had selfish ambition. Those who are outside, who are preaching with various motivations. And he decried that, uh, which is a very sad situation, especially when people who are preaching the gospel behave like that. But here he's focusing on the church people and uh, the effects that selfish ambition can have in a church environment. I'm sure that many churches around the world have their share of people who have selfish ambitions, want uh, prominence, and want to exercise their power, take over situations and do things their own way in order to get the prominence that they like to have. In the New Testament, we read about a man called Diotrephes in an unnamed church, which was led by a man called Gaius, 3rd John, uh, the epistle written by the apostle John, the third epistle. And uh, it said that uh, Diotrephes, he was wanting to have the preeminence in the church. And because he wanted to have preeminence, he created a lot of strife and contention in the church. He was quite the opposite of Gaius, who was a loving person who helped others and wanted to build up others. So the diatrophy syndrome actually is what Paul is also talking about, which can, can affect any one of us. Even if you're a good person serving the Lord with a wholesome ambition, as time goes on, you don't watch it. You can be a person unknowingly who is motivated by selfish ambition. So how do we deal with it? Well, he gives a secret in the next two verses. He says, let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, 
but also for the interest of others. So according to Paul, the simple secret to neutralize selfish ambition was to focus on helping others and to build up other people. And in the process of building up other people and helping them and their ministries that would automatically take care of selfish ambition within you. If you're in a work environment and this is a, an issue in your life, I want to assure you that if you're a child of God, if you're a follower of Jesus Christ, you are being watched by the Lord and your interests are covered by him. Therefore, you will get the break that the Lord wants you to have. There is no need absolutely to manipulate or maneuver or engineer anything so that you can come up or get the promotion you need or, or the benefits you need. While you sincerely work hard and honor Christ and seek not to bring any strife or contention in your organization, God will honor you and he will protect your interests and give you the promotions or the benefits or the perks that you deserve because God is the ultimate judge and he's sovereign over every situation. Back again to the church situation. In a church situation, the whole secret is in fostering others and in looking for the interests of other people. Now we saw this in the life of John the Baptist who said he must increase and I must decrease. And he was referring to the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was junior to him. Paul was, uh, John was two years older. John the Baptist was two years older than Jesus. Jesus came after him. And the moment Jesus revealed himself, John the Baptist said he must increase, I must decrease. And then we see this in the life of Jesus, our Lord, who told his disciples that when he goes away, they will do greater works than he did. Amazing. Without trying to define what that meant, which is another issue altogether. I want to say that this gives an insight into the heart of Jesus. He was the son of God. He had all things at his command. He wanted his disciples to do more quantitatively than he did. And he was not jealous about that. Amazing. And that's a good lesson for all of us who honestly and sincerely seek to serve God. And we want to see the progress of God's work here on earth. Nothing should be done with selfish ambition. No preacher, no church leader, no church member, no one who really loves the Lord and is serious about God's work should ever be motivated by selfish ambition. And when the seeds of selfish ambition begin to rise within you and you recognize it, the best thing that you can do is to focus on others and help them and you can prevent it by having a lifestyle of promoting others and helping others. And when you focus on developing others and building up others, teaching other people and rejoicing in their achievements and neutralizing ideas of competitiveness or jealousy, God's hand will be upon your life. That is the fantastic promise that we have in the word of God. And God is always watching over us. God is always trying to bring the best out in us when we cooperate with him and we listen to his blessed Holy Spirit and live according to his word. And I pray that he will help us to be people who are 
rid of selfish ambition and we will build up others and as a result multiply the workers of the kingdom who can reap the great harvest that we need to reap in the world today. May God help you and bless you to be that kind of person. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the marvelous example of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who said that his disciples would do greater works than he did. We thank you, Lord, for your promise given to us that as we focus on you and trust in you, you will protect us and keep us. And I pray for every person who is facing difficulties in their work environments and feel that they are denied of that which they deserve. May you fight on their behalf. You are Jehovah Savior. And I pray that you will meet their needs. In Jesus name. Amen. Thank you very much. May God bless you and be with you and help you to be an overcomer in this area as well. God bless you.